things were shared. Today I want to talk about the battles of the heavens. And I'm going to be a little bit deep, technical. But above all, I believe that the grace of God to understand is with you. Amen. Uh, this is a matter that is a matter of concern to many people. As I was preaching in the first service, I discovered that this is something the church has to understand and understand in detail. So allow me also to say, maybe we, we might build up on this topic uh, and expand on it so that we have understanding of the spiritual realm and the spiritual truths. Are we together? Now, um, the battle of the heavens, those who are joining us, uh, we've, been, we've been talking about the 10 battles of destiny. And it's my belief after this series, uh, we will write a book on the same and release it. Is that okay? So that uh, at least it can be documented and generations will benefit. Now, we need to come to one understanding that there are three heavens. There are three heavens. According to 2 Corinthians 12, 2, there are three heavens. I'll try not to project my voice because uh, I think we've been preaching a lot this week. So my sound will be on that level. Let's, let's read 2 Corinthians 12 to everybody. So that is Paul writing. And it was Paul, by the way, who had this encounter. He was caught up in the spirit and he accessed the third heaven. Now, if there is a third heaven, then there must be a second and a first heaven. That third heaven is where God dwells. You can see that in Isaiah 6 and Revelation 4. It carries the details of how that heaven looks like. That is where the throne of God is and that is where God dwells. Uh, it is sometimes called in Old Testament, the highest of heavens. That is where the devil wanted to ascend with his throne. Because the devil, his origin and residency was not in that heaven. So there is also the second heaven. The second heaven. And the second heaven is where we have fallen angels and also the standing angels. So in the second heaven, we have a standing or a stable dimension. And we have a fallen dimension. So there is a place where the angels that didn't fall, according to Jude 1.6... They are angels that did not fall. So these angels are in a part of the second heaven. And the other angels are also in another part of the second heaven. So that tells you there is a part in that heaven that is a backslidden part or a fallen part. And that part that is fallen and backslidden is what we call the demonic realm. The demonic realm. The other part that is not backslidden or fallen, it is the angelic realm. Okay? And that is the place we call the realm of the spirit. I know you have heard people say the spiritual realm. So the spiritual realm has two components. Let's assume the way we are in church. So it is one realm, but one area is fallen and the other area is okay. So the fallen realm is where we have the fallen angels that were judged and are waiting for their final condemnation. And we have the other angels that are standing and are not fallen. Now, that is the second heaven. The third heaven is the earth where we are. So this is a heaven. Where you are seated, I mean, it's considered as the first heaven, not, not the third heaven. So the, the, that realm called the spiritual realm has a fallen side and it has a stable side and a standing side. Now, the access to that realm is possible. And you can access the realm of the angelic where we have the divine possibilities or the possibilities of God. But you can also access the realm of the demonic where we have the possibilities of demonic powers. Now, we need to also scale down and that's why I said this straight teaching, I'll take time and teach you. I know you have heard that the devil is a created creature. But what you need to understand, there are different raw materials of creation, for lack of a better word. Man was made out of dust. You are matter. Matter means you are physical, 3D. 
That's why you cannot go through a wall. And Jesus was first born in our dimension. But the time Jesus rose from the dead, he attained a nature and a body that could survive in the other dimension. Jesus ascended with a body. And that body is not the one we have. It is not matter. It is a body that can survive in that dimension. So he carried a body. And that is why the one that they saw after resurrection, they could not recognize him. And it is a paradox that disciples that stayed with Jesus for three years could not recognize him after three days. Because he carried a body of another dimension. Now, that body can access earth and access that realm. That is how the devil has ability to build a kingdom under the sea, on land and on air. Hello. We are moving from Serelac. Is that okay? And the reason why I'm doing this is because I remember when Bamboo and the wife were here, the lady said at the age of nine, she was introduced into witchcraft and by 12, she was a high level wizard. So if 12, a child of 12 years is doctrinated demonically, that that child has the ability of outer body experience and a son in the kingdom is not doctrinated enough that that son has never journeyed in the spirit. He doesn't even know there's a spiritual realm. It is error. So the kingdom of darkness is deep. And they don't spare lectures. We are the ones who teach elementary stuff. So be ready for deep stuff. Because deep call it unto deep. You can't counter a deep devil with a shallow mindset. So the devil has a body and other fallen angels, they are creatures, they are angelic beings. They also carry bodies. But their bodies are not like ours. Yours is matter. I can hold you. Theirs you can't hold. But they can show up in a form. Some people have seen demons. Someone was telling me she used to have an attack of these night demons. The incubus, the succubus, and the asmodeus. If you want to understand that, go and look for the midnight prayer. You will know what asmodeus is. Because you need to know the devil you are fighting by name. Some of you, you have scattered, but you don't know what you are scattering. Hallelujah. I like the way you are looking at me. Go and look for that lecture. Two hours lecture. And after that, you will be able, you will look at an atmosphere and say, that is Belial. Selah. <laughs> now, these angels have a body. They, you cannot touch them per se, but you can sense their presence. So this lady was telling me, as she began to fight, closing the doors of this dream, one day she saw the face of the demon. And the demon said, I will kill you. I told her, it's a small matter. Don't be afraid. That demon cannot kill you. That demon wants to threaten you to be out of faith so that you can stop your prayers. And once you are out of faith, demons have a leeway of attack. It is faith that gives us stamina to engage in prayer. Not fear. Are we together? Now, so sometimes they can show up in a form. I've seen a form of a demon in my room. Not once, not twice. Sometimes I've sensed they are around. And sometimes I don't even tell my wife, but I open the door and I tell them, guys, wrong room, wrong house, please just get out. Because I covenant with Psalms. He gives rest to them that I love. And so insomnia is not my portion. Just get out. Wrong audience. And they leave and I sleep. Sometimes even oversleep. And it is not pride. It is knowing who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Now, so this realm, the, the spiritual realm, has an element that is fallen and the dark realm is where we have the demonic. Now we have angels that fell and they are creatures and under those fallen angels we have spirits that do not have bodies. Okay? 
So you have a creature that has a spirit subject to them. So any time there is an attack in a believer's life, it is not necessarily from the fallen angel, but it is from the spirits that are under that angel. And these fallen angels are the ones sometimes called principalities. But it depends with their ranks. Okay? As we continue with this, I'll show you the, the five angels mentioned in the Bible. So that you understand. Because the realm of the spirit operates with a rank. It is very militant. That realm is so orderly that it operates with a rank. You can't just show up. Yesterday we were in a meeting and I was told there's a man of God who has been, he is a man of prayer. And then I was told he has been having, he convulses and begins to fight things he does not know. And I said, I know why that is happening. Because he has entered a realm in the spirit and maybe he has shown up and the first people to interrogate him are principalities. Okay. That is why when you fast, you need to read the word. You might enter in a dimension and you encounter Jezebel. And you don't know who Jezebel is. Okay. You might touch a level and meet Balaam. And they begin to ask you, how did you get here? Do you understand the laws and the protocols of entering here? This is how you can find a person very gifted prophetically but some things are off in their own lives because by activation of prayer they accessed a realm and sometimes you can be fought. A man went for prayers 40 days. On the 40th day he ran mad. People had to do deliverance of demons. He entered a level that he had no capacity to interact. No revelation. Am I speaking to anyone? And I'm not saying praise, but there must be a balance between prayer and the word. Because prayer can usher you to dimensions. And that's why many cults have spiritual experiences, but they cannot qualify it with doctrine. People will lift a flag and go around it seven times and a demon will jump on someone and they will begin to prophesy going around. And it's not the Holy Ghost. Because you audit that spirit, you can sense it's not the spirit of God. There's a case I went to and a lady began to manifest and she began to prophesy in a manner that is not biblical. I told her, shut up. That's a strange spirit. We cast out the spirit. It was connected to her grandmother who carried a prophetic grace but through the wrong doors. Hello. Hello. Bonas if you will. That's what the Bible says. Test the spirit. Not the man. Because the man could have journeyed in the spirit. But is in the fallen level. And in that level. Whether you are in the right or the fallen. The information in the realm of the spirit is open for all. That's how you get false prophets and diviners that can call you by name, call your ID number, tell you your number plate, and then after that, harass your account. And they will not tell you something that will excite you. They will threaten you. They will say, I see a cloud of darkness. By the time you leave that meeting, you are more afraid and not attracted to God. That's a false spirit. The spirit of prophecy is the spirit of edification. Even if it's a rebuke, you will live edified, feeling that God has spoken. We shall handle that in our annual conference, the Prophetic Apostolic Summit. Are we together? That one will do theory and unlock prophetic dimensions because it is the will of God that all of you ought to prophesy. That was the desire of God when he spoke to Moses on the mountain. Said it is the will that all Israel should prophesy. So you don't need a man with a microphone sitting here saying prophesy, Papa. The spirit is the will of God that it lands on anyone. Now, so, so, so there are three heavens. We are going slowly. Are we together? 
We are going slowly. So there are three heavens. The third, the second, and the first. We are in the first. Now, where God dwells, that's like a headquarters. When you go to a secondary school, you have the principal office. She's the one that runs the school from her office. Sometimes you will gather all the prefects and tell them, this week, I don't want to see people roaming around. I don't want to see people sleeping late. This week, we are very strict. And then the prefects are released in the school compound. And they legislate what the headmaster or principal has given them. From the headquarters, they carry instructions. And they come with authority to run the school. Now, the headquarters is what we call the highest of heaven. In the, in the scripture, you will see it called the kingdom of heaven. I have given you the keys from the kingdom of heaven. That is the headquarters. Why? Because Peter, you have an assignment in the kingdom of God. That is the radius of our influence. Is it making sense? Okay. So where God lives is the highest. Then we have the second heaven. In this second heaven is where we have what we call spiritual warfare. And this is where we have spiritual interferences on our realm. Now those two words, you must understand them. The word realm, spiritual realm, it means spiritual place. Uh, physical realm, it means where we are. Are you getting it? So what we need to understand is that life is not just spiritual, but there are spiritual things that dictate physical life. Are you getting it? So life is not just spiritual. But there are things that are spiritual that can dictate your physical life. It's very true. These physical things can also interfere with spiritual things. We'll look at that dual operation. Now, let's begin to look at how you can interfere with the realm of the spirit from the earth. Hello? Uh, have I lost anyone? Yes? Don't speak on anyone. I repeat. There is no exam. My main point is for you to understand. Are we together? Oh, I have lost you. Okay, because of our sister. <laughs> no problem. I know you are taking your child outside. Now listen. The, the realm of the spirit can affect this realm. And this realm can also affect that realm. Okay? Now, witchcraft is people doing stuff here. And they provoke this here. And then when this one is provoked here, it affects here. Are you getting it? So, you can never deal with witchcraft if you don't understand how here people operate. And then if you don't understand what people can do here, this realm, to affect that realm. There are things that happen in life because of a hijacked heavens. And there are things that happen and they hijack heavens. Okay? Now, let's look at a story. This is what we looked at in the first service. This scripture. And I also think we might look at it today and go home. So that we understand how this here we affect there. This is the story of David. And I'm going to read the whole of it. So the time will finish verse 30. That's when the service will end. So we are reading a whole chapter. Are we together? No, I, I met with Mr. Elijah in the office and I asked him, sir, what do you like about church? Not that I'll continue doing what you like, but I just asked him. He told me, one thing I'm learning is that here we don't throw scriptures. We are given background and you can understand the scripture in detail. I say, that is good. That one I can continue. Are we together? Because there are times you go and you are told favor. And you are told seven triggers of favor. Matthew 24, 24. Ah, Isaiah 16, 10. So you are given scriptures, but sometimes they are out of content. Like I was coming in the morning and I had a man of God preaching. And he was saying, and Jesus saw the boldness of Peter 
And he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. I tell you, when God sees your boldness, he will build his church on you. I said, you're in error. That's not the context. And the men were shouting, amen. And you know, sometimes when you shout a lie, it looks like true. He was teaching about how to be a bold believer. Now, that was a wrong scripture. And can I tell you the truth? Someone will go on Monday and say, God is building his church on me. You can't handle the church of God. It is heavy for you. Okay. <laughs> now, Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. This is a bad devil. So David said to Joab, Joab was the commander of the armies of David. This was a man that followed David from the cave of Adullam. And to the leaders of the people, go number Israel from Bathsheba to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Allow me to tell you because you will understand this story when you understand why numbering was wrong. There are two reasons that provoked David to number Israel. The first one, it could be a reason of showing that he owns the people. Because you cannot number something that doesn't belong to you. The language of shepherds in Israel was that you only had authority to number animals that belong to you. Now, Israel was God's sheephold or God's flock. So David did not have any power to number the flock of God. Number two, people numbered men to no military capacity. So when you know you have a big number, it tells you automatically that if war rises, you have a good defense system. So by numbering, he was either communicating pride that these are my people, or by numbering, he was communicating that he does not believe in the Lord when it comes to battle, but he believes in the armies and the numbers. And that's why even in this nation, we have to tell politicians, hakuna watu wako, watu ni wamungu. It is true. Some of them behave like they own us. Even the way they talk. You talk on behalf of the mountain. We are not the mountain. Seller. Oh. And Job answered, may the Lord make his people a hundred times more than they are. Now this was a prayer of, may the Lord deceive David. But my Lord, the king, are they not all Lord's servants? Why then does my Lord require this thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore Joab departed and went through all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Then Joab gave the sum of the number of people to David. All Israel, everybody read ahead. One million, one hundred thousand men who drew their sword. And Judah had four hundred and seventy thousand men who drew their Now from there you begin to understand. The relevance of men is in their ability to fight. This kingdom is not about babysitting. It is about the capacity to engage in battle. There are other men that were counted. But look, the number that Joab took to the king. So, anyone that could not draw a sword, that was a useless statistics. Okay. <laughs> it's time to be tired of being other people's prayer items. And be a carrier of their prayer items. Because you can't be a useless statistics before the king of kings. That when God is looking for a man to partner with, he says, this one is just a tourist on earth. This one is the one who testifies what happens to others. He's an eyewitnesser. That cannot be a portion. Hallelujah. So, he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them, for the king word was abominable to Joab. So, this was a wise servant. Levi could not be counted. This was the inheritance of God. They could not fight. And God was displeased with this thing. Therefore, he struck Israel. Uh -huh. So David said to God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I pray, take away the iniquity of your servant. For I have done very foolishly. 
So David knew what he was doing was wrong. Then the Lord spoke to God. This is God the prophet, not God. The way you pray, Father God, this is God the prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. David Seer saying, this was a prophet in the time. Go and tell David saying, Thus says the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself that I may do it to you. So God came to David and said to him, Thus says the Lord, choose for yourself either three ears of famine or three months to be defeated by your foes with the sword of your enemies overtaking you or else for three days the sword of the Lord, the plague in the land which the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the territory of Israel. Now consider what answer I should take back to him who sent me. Three options. That number one, you flee three months to be defeated by your force or your enemies overtaking you or three days of the sword of the Lord. And David is a very wise man. See, see what he tells the Lord. Let me fall in your hands. And David said to God, I am in great distress. Please let me fall into the hand of the Lord. For his mercies are very great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. Now David understood. The language of mercy is suspension of justice. I know people always say favor is unfair. That's not the language. Mercy is unfair. Because mercy is released where judgment was supposed to reign. Are you getting it? It means you have messed up. You deserve to be judged. But God bypasses the mess and still blesses you. That is mercy. Favor is not unfair. I can show you triggers of favor. It is triggered. Mercy is the one which is unfair. That's why we come on Sunday and we say we are here by the mercies of God. Because when we look at our dealings, there are places we missed. And God never struck us. Mercy prevailed. So David was repenting and saying, let mercy, let me fall in the hands of mercy. But at this time, God was not going to relent. And David understood the justice system of God. There is a time he got a child with Bathsheba. The Lord said, I'm going to kill the child. He decided to fast. God never resurrected the child. He still killed him. And David rose after he heard the child is dead. There are times you need to embrace the mercies and the judgments of God in equal measure. I know he's a father, but he's a judge. I've gone through God's judgments. A time I was dating a lady and God told me she's not the one. I insisted. I even brought her to church. And I began to say, Father, thank you for my wife. God said, who? This one is not your wife. This is a knife. And I tell you, that's what she became. A good knife that tore me apart. When I went in the house of God, I did not ask him, where were you? I said, thank you, Lord, for your justice. Sometimes the justice of God will preserve you. Are you getting me? Some of us, we are who we are because of the justice of our parents. If they never ministered and administered justice, we will have fallen. God does not minister justice because he hates you. It's out of the abundance of love and to create the protocols of operation so that next time you don't veer off, you know what awaited you. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel and 70,000 men of Israel fell. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, a plague was released. Now, what is a plague? It's a calamity in the territories of man. Cholera, HIV, COVID, plague. Are we together? Plagues have been there. They are ancient. It is something that attacks men. Now, when men are not spiritual, they begin to look things from scientific lenses. So I want to believe Motahi Kagwe was there. Saying there is a plague, guys. We need to sanitize and wear masks. Just take care of your neighbor. Okay. <laughs> the source of the plague was not China. It was judgment. Okay, I'm not saying COVID is judgment. So, for bloggers, don't misquote me. I'm using something that is current. Are you getting me? Something that we can all 
relate with. So now, there was a plague in Israel. Men were dying. And I want to believe if Israel was in our day, the ministry of health is looking for ways of containing the plague. The researchers are trying to understand how the immune is responding to this particular plague. And at that time, the church must Google to know the source. Is this a spiritual thing? Because nothing strikes the earth in a certain dimension without God permitting it. I know I'm speaking. Now, scientists are employed to study botany and zoology. We are deployed. Ours is different. Men are employed as we are deployed like military to understand spirituality. It is called the study of the spiritual things. We journey in pneumatology. Check on some Christology and then we settle on eschatology. That is what we study. And then we tell you behold the matter. It is not a virus. It's a plague. There is an angel in the spirit that has stretched a sword of judgment over the lands of the earth. And we give direction. And we look for our minister to go and say, sanitize, wear a mask, but sanitize thy mouth and thy lives. Wear ash clothes and seek the face of God. This matter cannot go by scientific research. I, I, I want to show you by scripture. Higher. Now let's read. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem. To do what? To destroy it. As he was destroying, the Lord looked and relented. Or God looked and mercy came. Of the disaster. Now let's hold it there. Now what was destroying Jerusalem? Was it a plague or an angel? Where do angels operate from? Second heaven. Where is the attack? Is it now making sense? So there is an angel with a sword. Destroying. In the realm of the spirit is an angel with a sword. In the realms of earth, it's a virus. According to scientific explanation. Now, are you seeing how sometimes we pray off? Yes. You know, we, we, we are, that's why Africa, we are good with the activity of prayer. But we don't understand what prayer is all about. We know the activity. I tell you if today we are to, if I tell you today we are praying for Kenya, people will pray, but they don't even know what they are dealing with in terms of Kenya. You don't know the gates of Kenya. You don't know the covenants of Kenya. You don't know the prophecies upon Kenya. You don't understand the spiritual rulers of Kenya. You don't understand the principalities that contend with Kenya. But I tell you, people will pray. You'll even see them shaking their heads. Kenya. Nothing changes because you are shaking your head. The kingdom of darkness is not moved by how violent you look in the physical. It is by revelation. Now maybe men were fasting. In Lemuru. Saying, we scatter this plague. They even do prophetic action. We scatter. <laughs> and then tomorrow they bury more. Then they go and now anoint hospitals. We paralyze. And in the realm of the scurvy, you can't scatter an angel. You must deploy spiritual techniques to deal with that realm. Am I speaking to anyone? So, 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 so the man, the angel, one angel, one angel. I tell you, if we were to begin to analyze the power of an angel, hi. <laughs> uh, it is the, the angel who was destroying. God said, It is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the land of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of no Onan the Jebusite. He stood, the sword was still there. He was told, Restrain thy hand. But something has to happen for the man to restrain his sword. Then David lifted his eyes. Now these are not physical eyes. Some of you have good spectacles. But you cannot see clearly in the spirit. 
Okay. That was meant to be a joke. I, it cannot go to waste. Anyway. <laughs> you know, when you are teaching spiritual deep stuff, even naturally in a serious movie, there's always what they call tension release. There's always one comic man to, to break the tension. <laughs> so, so, because I'm not teaching this thing to scare anyone. I'm bringing revelation for awareness to equip you for prayer. Are we together? My main objective is for you to leave this place edified and feeling I have to be serious with my prayer from today. That's my main objective. Now, everyone has a spiritual eye. It's not eyes. And a spiritual ear, not ears. In the book of Revelation, it was written for them that have an ear. It doesn't say let them. It says let him who has an ear to hear what the spirit is saying. There is an ear in the spirit. Your spirit has organs. One of them is an ear and another one is an eye. We need to be conversant with spiritual truths. Some of you, your eyes are so clean that you see things like visions. Some of you, your eyes are so bad that your life is full of surprises. Sudden death. And especially for women. Every woman has a prophetic seat. If it is well activated without jealous and malice, you will be clear. And that's why every man, you must listen to your wife well. The reason why I'm saying well, so that you can audit between emotions and revelations. It is good to know when she's murmuring and when she's uttering. That's why a man must be more spiritual than the wife. Seller. If she has ever advised you on something and it came to pass and you ignored, you know what I'm saying. And if she has ever advised you on something and it never came to pass and you felt like a hero, that was emotions. So it is you to be spiritual. There are times my wife speaks and I listen. I say prophesy woman of God. And there are times she speaks and I say I love you because <laughs> I know now I'm dealing with a seat of emotions. Let's look at this matter. Uh, and the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven having his hand on a drawn sword, stretched out over Jerusalem. This is still a sign of judgment. If he moves that sword, men will die with a plague. Huh. So David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces. This is a posture of repentance. And you can see who carried the mandate. Elders. Can we build on that matter? Yes. Elders are not old men who have Prados and Harriers that give a lot of money during fundraisings. Those are not elders. Those are businessmen in a city and they are good to be in charge. Elders are men that can see a sword with an angel. They are men that stand at the gates of a city to contend for the deliverance of the city. You know, we see men with money and we say, you are an elder. You are not an elder. You are a rich businessman who is a kingdom financier. We cannot give you titles because you may not handle the battle. And do we need, we, it's good to decide. If, if today, there's a time I assembled a few men and I told them, you are the church committee to raise money. There's nothing spiritual about that. Think on strategies of getting money without manipulation, without coercion, without abuse. Think. I never told them they are elders. They knew. Mr. Njaga is there, one of them, a senior strategist. He works in the, uh, one of the leading banks. I told him, think. And I gave them the concept of the land project. And I gathered a few people whom I knew. If we don't fix our target, I can tell them, can we donate? Hallelujah. But when we are dealing with elders, you look for men that can see in the spirit. Men that can gather at the gates and contend. Can we go deeper? It is out of those elders. Elders who are city managers. They stayed at the gates. They contended in prayer. It is out of those elders that a bishop was selected. The name bishop means an overseer of the elders. The name bishop is not a man with a wrong robe. 
and a big stuff that comes to your parish once a year for dedication of children and baptism. Those are not bishops. Those are religious leaders governing big religious organizations and they are good. It works for them. But bishops were elders, men that could sit at that gate and contend. That's why the book of Titus does not mention anything spiritual about a bishop. It is one that has governed his family well. Period. That's the CV. It's family management. So, so if we get enough elders, we can get a bishop. But you see now we can't get a bishop here because elders must be city-centered. And that bishop, that bishop is overseer. Are we together? It's only that we were infiltrated with Roman Catholicism. It came even as we were protesting because we are called protestants. We didn't leave empty. We left with some stuff. And then we protested. So the day we gathered, we began to say, ah, a Pope, no. Bishop. Uh, archbishop, yes, Archbishop. <laughs> but, <laughs> and I'm not saying they are bad. It works for, I'm just a Bible teacher. Are we together? Because I'm not here to attack any. Mimi si attack any say, si yo mini lianzisha, si no kweli. Lakini mimi najua mandiko ni Simini ubiri mandiko. Sindio. Before mwanza kunita senior bishop. Si mujue kwanza ukweli. Amen. And those men used to transact at the gates. That's where they prayed. So if today, if Limuru is in error, the different pastors need to sit down and identify the city elders. And out of them appoint an overseer. This has nothing to do with a pastor's WhatsApp group. And then look for one who drives a beaker and tell him you are the pastor's chairman. It's not about chairman. It's about capacity in the spirit. Now, do you understand why cities are shut? Yes? Because there is no unity of elders. Every church is praying for the city. As a life church, we come and say, Father, you have given us Limuru. God does not give cities to churches. He delivers cities to his kingdom. And those are called selfish prayers. Why do I make such prayers? Because I'm thinking, if all the muru comes to me, imagine your tithe. I may not tell you that is my main desire, but that's the calculation I have done. And those are called soulish prayers. They have nothing to do with God. And so in the realm of the spirit, we have covered the city with carnality. Let me ask you, have you never wondered, you go to a town, it has many churches and the same churches equal to the number of bars, prostitution. It is so wicked. Yet, why is the city not changing? Because men began the churches from the soul. Their prayers are not from the spirit. Hello. I know my bonus. I know when you're looking for a wife, you quote Proverbs 31. Now, let me tell you when you finish that scripture, well, you'll discover the practitioner of Proverbs 31 was an elder. Hello? So you are here looking for a Proverbs 31 wife and you are a child who cannot stand at the gates. You can't handle that woman. You have no capacity. The Bible says she brings honor to her husband at the gates. It is elders who sit at the gate. Not young confused men bound with Netflix. Elders, men of prayer. <laughs> Hello. So the next time they put Proverbs 31, tell them, finish the text. <laughs> thou qualifies thou. <laughs> ah, okay. And, and so an angel. Just stay there. Uh, just stay there. Uh, so David and the elders, clothing, sackcloth, fell on there. These are the men that could call upon heaven. And heaven does not bypass this protocol. That's why in heaven there are 24 elders. There is no youth church in heaven. Sorry. Matters worship warfare, you must be a mature person in the spirit. Uh -huh. Let's go to 17. Are you learning something? 
And David said to God, was it not I who commanded the people to be numbered? I am, uh, I am the one who has sinned and done evil indeed. But this sheep, are you seeing the name sheep? Meaning that that language of counting was the language of a shepherd. He did not have any rank to count the people because he was not the shepherd. The flock had an owner. Huh. What have they done? Let your hand, I pray, O oh Lord, my God, be against me and my father's house, but not against your people, that they should be plagued. Now someone will ask me, Pasi, why is God unfair? Why is God punishing innocent people and not punishing David? But they, who did the mistake? It's David, right? Listen, whatever preserved David was not his character. It was covenant. God had entered a covenant with David that his throne will be established forever. So God could not touch David and his household because of covenant. You read the character of the father called the father of faith, Abraham, and I'm not diminishing him. You will see many places where faith does not count. The first time he picked Haggai, it was not faith. That was carnality. That Egyptian woman. There's no faith. Even the day he went to one of the kings, Ahimelech, the Lord shows up and tells the king, you are a dead man. And Abraham has lied to the king, this is my sister. God was guarding covenant, not Abraham. The problem is that Abraham had the covenant. <laughs> Can I even go further? Have you never asked yourself, Aaron is the chief priest in the calf denomination. He's the one leading the sacrifice and the ritual. God judges the worshippers and he does not judge the chief priest. He looks unfair. It's because God had made a covenant with the house of Aaron that they shall produce high priest. He was preserving his covenant. And the covenant was preserved by the garment of the priest. The day God wanted to eliminate Aaron, he took the garment off and killed the man. He judged the man on the mountain. He said, take off the garment, place it on Eliezer. The man fell dead. Judgment was hanging over him, but he could not touch him because of covenant. That's why David was not touched. Because of the everlasting. Now, don't ask me, I'm not God, but I know the systems of covenant. That's why you need to know the covenants that God has made with you. There are prayers we call covenantal prayers. Are we together? Are we together? Huh. That's why people, some people have overtaught that thing of covenant. And it is very sensitive to make a covenant with God. Because God is not unfaithful, but you are unfaithful. Father, I swear in your name. Hi. I will be giving you 30% if you give me that job. And then you get a job and they are paying you 200,000. 30% is 60,000. The first day you bring. The second day you bring. The third day you say, I. <laughs> and God is still watching. How faithful you will be with you. <laughs> so never attempt. Are we together? Agree with the covenants that God has invited you in. And carry them. Huh. So let's go to it. Therefore, the angel of the Lord commanded God to say. Now, the moment you see the angel of the Lord in capital letters, that is God. Okay? Commanded God to say to David that David should go and erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Onan. Now, listen. The angel, God told him, retreat the sword. But it is only an altar that will make him return. A retreated sword is not a return sword. It can move. And when the sword moves, men die. Can I give you five laws that govern the realm of the spirit? Are you ready? Today I'm going slow. Five laws that govern that realm. And these laws are applied even by witches. The first law is the law of sacrifices. The law of sacrifices. Sacrifices. Let me be very clear. I know there is a perverted teaching on sacrifices. There is a teaching on Inua Madabahu, Inua Dabihu. 
and people have been deceived by that teaching. That is not what I'm talking about. Anytime God places a demand on a sacrifice, there are two things he will do. One, he will lead you. Two, he will give you grace. It can be painful, but he will instruct you and give you grace. The, when we were doing the 40 days of prayer, a lady came with her phone and said, Pasi, I've been struggling with this phone. And God spoke to me the first day of prayer that I need to give it out. I said, okay. And I remember when we were praying, she was crying. I knew it is the pain. Okay, your phone is a good thing. You know, it's, it's, it's easy, you know. To some people, it matters. So she released. Two days later, someone brought a sewing machine and said, I was helped. I want to be a blessing. I opened the store and the lady was there asked her, uh, you know anyone who needs a sewing machine? She says, I always do sewing part-time. And I was believing God for a machine. I said, behold the machine. <laughs> now guess what? Whatever she gave, that phone she gave, one of our pastors could not be on WhatsApp because he didn't have a phone. So I'm holding the phone and I'm like, you know someone has released the phone. And I know this is someone's prayer. He said, I don't have a phone. I released. Now, are you seeing the chain of command? That there are things you are believing God for. <laughs> and there are things people are believing God for. So as you release, he releases. It is a level of entrustment. How many know hands that are full cannot hold? Sacrifice is not for children or servants. It's for sons. Abraham said to the servants, stay at the foot of the mountain. We are going to worship the Lord. He went with his son Isaac and they ascended. I'll tell you. You have a young child, take them to Naivasia, buy them biscuits. A thousand, boom. One box, one hundred. You get nine hundred change. You leave Naivas with that child and tell that child, Nipe. The child will hold the whole box and put it at the back and say, mm -mm. And you look at that child and wonder, do you know the change I have can buy you nine more? Now tell your neighbor, some of you are like that in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why I said sacrifice is not for children. If I buy my wife biscuit and I tell her, give me, she'll give me the whole box and ask me, just take what you want. <laughs> some of us, it's not easy. Sacrifices will mess your budget. Mess your plans. I was here believing God for a car. Began to save. Hi. The day we were making a, a, a transfer as a deposit, it bounced. Guess what? That night, the Lord spoke to me. Told me, do you need a car now? And yes, I need one. Mine is, I can't even go beyond 40 kilometers. Even as we are talking, it's more like it's Udaish. It's like a wheelbarrow, amen. You know, the noise. <laughs> the noise is making. So, so I'm here. And this is money I've worked for. It's not offering. Things have gone for missions. I've saved. I've saved. Then the Lord tells me. Uh, do you need the money between the car and the generator? Which is more important now? Then he gives me now priorities of the kingdom. Versus appetites of the pastor. <laughs> and I called Pastor William at 12. I told him generator deposit direct. I want to tell you I had balancing tears. <laughs> Let me tell you, when you're about to buy something, you see so many of them. <laughs> I knew the car I wanted. And even the day I was going to park, I, the, the car in front of me was my prayer item. And I followed it. It parked where I was going. Until I began to be spiritual. I said, Lord, I know you are speaking. I know you are confirming. <laughs> Until I heard the true voice. Generator. Tell your neighbor sacrifice. Is a language of sounds. But it works in the kingdom. Even in the kingdom of darkness. You gain your rank by sacrifice. Do you know why people sacrifice? Especially in the kingdom of darkness. They will audit what you love. And tell you bring that person. It's a son or your mother. Bring that person. Because they want to take away that attachment so that whatever they tell you to do, you can do it because you have lost all that you loved. That's how people become wicked in that kingdom. Because you have given all that made 
sales. Even in this kingdom, of course, God does not rob. God addresses the appetite and the possession of that thing. So that he can usher you to a level of entrusting you with more. He said to Abraham, from today, in blessing thee, I shall bless thee. I swear by myself, Abraham opened a door of handling real blessing. And you know later, Abraham, when he died, he had other sons other than Isaac. It's true. So, this language of sacrifice, it is not to bribe God, but it answers in the realm of the spirit. It's a very powerful force. That's why you can never go to a witch. By the way, I've never seen someone go to a witch. Nana Mwambia, ni haje witch. Si uko poa sai. Ndo hata nimeku. Si na job. Si uko poa. We finya, fanya vitu zako. Iyo job ikitoka. First salary ni yako. Hakuna mtu anenana kwa mchawi na fuliza. <laughs> Unajipanga hata kama ni loan unachukua. And the demands they place. I've never heard anyone complain. And witches know the power of sacrifice. They understand it's a law in the spirit. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Number two is the power, the law of altars. He was told, raise an altar unto the Lord. For me, if you ask me, an altar is not a physical monument. Can I even be very radical with you? You see where I'm standing? It's an elevated pondium. I know we have had this language of Roho Abwana Mekasirika Nasema mumechafua madhabahu Kuna watu wanaimba pale Ndiyo maana nguvu za mungu wazishuki Listen You can have a wicked worshiper But God is ministering to you On a personal level Are you getting it? This, the days of altars Physical Died This is an elevated area For pastor to see you and you to see me. Period. We do gimmicks. I've seen people come. And they're told, come with your sacrifice. Lay it on the altar. Cry on that altar. This altar will answer you. And let me tell you, what answers them is not the cry on, the, on this stone monument. It is their faith. Are you getting me? So even if you throw money here, and you give there, it is the same. This one is not more holier than that one there. I'm trying to deal with some people who bring commotion here. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? No, it's good to make things clear. Are we together? But let me tell you, because we gather here frequently for spiritual activity, that is what makes this an altar. Okay? Because there are many persistent spiritual activities. It makes this an altar. A pathway of engagement. Now, we don't just pray from here. So you also pray from there. So the whole of this house is considered as an altar. Because there are spiritual activities and transactions. Are you getting me? So we don't need to put a rail here and a big city, a bishop, and say no one passes here unless it's an altar. Okay, it works for some religions. But I tell you, this place is not holier. If your dealings with God are not okay, no matter how high and how red this pulpit is, God cannot move in your life. That's, the, that's it. Altars are in our hearts. So ideally what I'm saying, you must develop a culture of spiritual engagement in an area. That's, the, uh, that, that's what we call the raising of an altar. You can't raise something powerful than what Jesus raised on Calvary. We can't do that. We can't do that. And there are people who have decided this is a holy place and respect their faith. Don't go there defiling it and sitting on it. If you find a barrier, respect, don't go there, please. Respect their, their faith. It works for them. So leave them alone. And sometimes God moves here and he does not move there. It kills the omnipresence of God. The one who moves here only up and your mungu it, 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 it is not doctrinally accurate. There is also the law of consecration. The law of consecration. 
Consecration is to be set apart. This setting apart is what communicates righteousness. You can be righteous by acts, good morals. And there are people who have good morals. They are righteous. They are witches who fast. They don't struggle with fleshly desires. Because they know that rian does not answer to defilement. Okay, did you not see the spokesman of Mount Kenya? The one who speaks on behalf of the mountain. Yes. The day he was being consecrated, they said he cannot sleep with his wife. And there are foods he was not supposed to eat. He was consecrated, set apart, and observed some level of purification and holiness. Because that realm answers to some level of righteousness by works. You go to a diviner's house. They, uh, these people fast. They, they, they guard their mouths. They are disciplined on spiritual laws. And that's why they can tell you things prophetically. You who is born again, go into a diviner and they can tell you some stuff because you are defiled. Hello? It's not that God cannot tell you those things. You have no capacity to journey there. And so some of you, because of that, you want powerful preachers who go there and then come and tell you what God is. Many Africans are lazy. That's why we celebrate prophets. It's not the inability of God speaking. Their altars are full of ashes instead of fire. So they are looking for a man that can pay the price. And those who are paying the price are conning you well, well. You will pay the price for their price. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? And that's why they need bodyguards. Because they sneak there illegally. Those are thieves. <laughs> if you go there legally and God permits you to prophesy, the first thing you will download is the nature of the Holy Spirit. You will be humble. It's very true. You don't need a man that has eaten metal. And then you feel very safe. Aye. You speak in tongues and activate the hedge of fire. And you walk in town. But we have to address this thing. A preacher with board guards. That one should be questionable. The 12 disciples were not board guards. No. That name disciple means people being trained in the disciplines of the master. They are not board guards. They are not board guards. But you come to see Jesus and then they push you. But you see Peter, instead of morning devotion, they are doing gym devotion. Saying, we are going to Capernaum. <laughs> ah, no. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, a generation is being deceived. People think being a pastor is flashy life. Expensive cars and intimidating men. You are not a pastor. The first level is to be a servant. If you cannot wash my feet, you are not worth even my tithe. It's a fact. The natures of Christ will be downloaded because the gift will begin to conform you to the source. Are you getting me? So where were we before we go there? The law of consent. Then there is the law of faith. Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing. Comma. I heard Orengo in, in the court addressing BBI and he was talking about adjectives. A nouns. And I said, that's how men study legislation. Even a comma makes sense. That comma changes everything about that scripture. That tells you, whatever you hear first will create a faith. When you hear the word of God, you will have faith in God. It is that which you hear repeatedly. Muchawi, muchawi, muchawi. Kuwa, 
kuua madhabahu 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 later you will develop a faith of madhabahu muchawi kuua it's very true the more you hear the word of god that god is powerful than witches god is powerful than sorcerers the blood of jesus has redeemed you you keep on hearing that one day you will meet a witch and remember your faith is grounded on something different and you cannot transact in the realm of the spirit without faith even witches the reason why they tell you go and look for a black chicken they are testing your faith obedience is there is is, is a sign of faith you come with a black chicken they say this is not black enough you look for a black enough faith and then they ask you do you believe yes look for 20000 you look for 20000 they ask you do you believe yes then they face a wall and do their stuff and give you stuff and then you carry mti mesiagwa ya green kamefungwa na karatasi na kakae kwa branding ya maganda ya ndizi na ukaeka kwa handbag pale umeka title deed and you went home and then you are told to take shower at 12 midnight. That is faith that you can wake up. Utumie muti mesiagwa. Uweke kwa maji. Na uoge marasaba. Na useme my husband will love me. Your faith is what will answer. Si haka kaunga. And now people want church. Ikwe wachawi. So that people don't believe Jesus just like that. Last more wapatia ka anointing oil. Ka Israel. <laughs> Last more wapatia maji. Why in the nayo home? Kila siku. Eh na kachumvi. Kila siku akiamka asubuhi anajipaka lotion, alafu anajiguzisha ka anointing oil. I'm covered. Ah. And I tell you it's happening. You go to people car they have anointing oil. Branded with faces of men. Those are systems of witches. Whereby your faith is banked on something. And because we have, we are rich in Africanism and witchcraft. Ukienda kanyumba kamchawi lazimo toke na kitu. Ukikuja kwa nyumba ya pastor pia unangonjo toke na kakitu. Au tatoka na kitu. Tatoka na declarations. Taunua mikono nukwambia, sema my father, my father. After five minutes nakwambia enda home. There's someone I prayed for. Ali ni pay story two hours. You know, to complicate the matter. Pastor kwetu wada kuna madhabahu za mababu. Mimi wada kwetu wakuna mutu wanaito muangia she succeed. Mimi ni makuwa nikipigo na mapepo siku. Two hours. Niki msikiza tu. Niki wambia sasa tuneza omba. Haka piga magoti. Haka inuwa mikono. Haki tetemeka kwanza hile. Sasa nione kapisa roho wame kuja. Nika sema, Father, in the name of Jesus, I disconnect this brother from every family altar. Amen. Aku say my amen. But want to make up. The community is our to me umba. Oh, Lisa, he voto. Nika mambia eh. We will go and go to Anini. Ni tishi anointing oil ni kumuagilie. Ni kuambia touch, pokea, pokea. Ni anoint kitovu. No. It is faith. Unless I'm instructed by the Holy Ghost to do some stuff. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? That realm answers to faith and simple faith. That's why God is moved by the faith of a child. One day there was a blackout in my house and my child was looking at me and looking at the bulb. In a manner to suggest, nini ni mbaya? Ikitwe inawaka. You know, the child did not understand the economy of the house. Ajui kama ni tokens ilisha. For her, she has faith. You are my parents, do something. And on day two, there were no lights. She began to cry. And that's what we do when things are not working. We cry to our father. Because we believe in God so much. Hallelujah. Faith is a currency. The first service. Prove to them. What is this? This are. Talk to me. This is a. This a thousand. Amen. This a thousand. What is this? It is currency. Do you know, in this a thousand, I have bread, I have yogurt, I have lunch. What are those things? But what is this substance? Are you getting it? So, if I go to the supermarket and I don't have a thousand and get all the things 
I have to go through the counter. And they will count and ask me, do you have the substance to get the things? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So, if I have this substance and I'm hoping for bread, is it not the evidence of bread in this substance? So, if I'm hungry and I, and I, and I have this 200, do you know I will walk like I'm already full? Because I know my hunger can be settled. This one can manufacture a plate of food. <laughs> now, if that does not, Mimi is doing as a quick play. Why? Because in the realm of the spirit, there are things that can never manifest in this realm until you have this substance. And the more this substance is, the more you have access over these things. Now, the other thing we must study, what are those things? These things are things that come to give us backup in our assignment in God. Today, there, 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 you, there are appetites that are yours. I've given you a story of a car and generator. That car was my appetite. It's a thing. But the desire of God was generator. So, did I have the money for the generator? Yes. So there are things God will not give you even if you have faith. You can't have faith to have another man's wife. Those are not your things. <laughs> because again we have taught faith and made it look like it's an open check to access anything. Are you getting it? Your appetites must be aligned with the ordinances of God. That's why men that have results of faith, they will tell you their testimonies with God first. And even if God gives you a thing called a car, I've dedicated cars here, and many people come and tell me, this one is for the kingdom. And I say, that's how the thing came. That's why it came. If you are to tell me, Pastor, kwetu tumedharauliwa sana, kwetu, sisi kwanza tumedharauliwa sana. Nikambia mungu anipea gari. Hii ni manunua. Naenda kesho kitui. Wajue. Walio kutharao jana. Wataku celebrate leo. Anoint. That thing is not of God. <laughs> it must give glory to the Father. Let's go back to the scripture and finish. Uh -uh. Then there is the law of sound. Law of sound. The law of sound. In sound we have praise and worship. Praise and worship. We have prayer. And these things create atmospheres. The law of sound. Every shrine has a sound. Every shrine has a sound. There are no spiritual dealings without a sound. The Bible says, and Daniel was told you cannot pray in this territory. That day, Daniel released a sound. The Bible says the whole of Babylon had. Whatever sound Daniel released, was not heard in the physical Babylon. It was too big for a man's sound to be heard. Babylon was big more than Kiambu. So it was heard in the realms of the spirit. And because of that sound, the decree of the king was nullified. By the time the man ended in the lion's den, those lions could not open their mouth because the sound of Daniel silenced them. That's why even witches, they can never operate without speech. You'll never find a mute witch. They will come with a list. And that's why sometimes these two prayers of beads, some of them new chawi. You are given a list. You are told, go outside the life church and declare 99 times life church will not prosper. At 2 in the morning, naked, facing the gate, do you come? <laughs> Naked. One. Life church will not prosper. Two. Life church will not prosper. Three. Ninety-nine times. Now you tell me, you'll deal with that person from a place of humility. I want to just take it. I'm a humble guy. Where? Those words will manifest in your life. That's why, that's why we pray the way we pray. We utter sometimes, even we just speak in tongues. It is a kingdom language. It depends which one. 
They fumble things you can't understand and then they tell you mababu anasema. Listen, they are consulting, they are decoding matters in their realm. Are you getting me? Look at our traditional songs. They are songs even, even when the mungikis were there. Those guys, there is a time they will sing and you'll see something has gotten in them and you see a boldness that cannot be understood. And they are singing traditional songs, shaking their legs. By the time they are done chorus 4, you can sense an atmosphere of anarchy, rebelliousness, and you can't bring that meeting to order. Because at that time, they have stirred the atmosphere by sound. Those who come from western Kenya, you know, during circumcision times, they will come with their small to drums as they beat and they sing. Spirits descend upon men. They say, that is the time ladies are raped. And it is normal. If you're a lady and you meet that convoy, rape is part of it. And then the spirits locate circumcisers with two drums. You're seeing people saying, no, no, no. in the streets, a spirit finds expression and a man is given the circumcisor's knife. Someone that has never done surgery and that day he will circumcise accurately without missing the part. And then you tell me, songs are just songs. Hey, you need to understand these things. They start atmospheres. This is the same thing. You go to a club. A PhD holder. A man of honor. You go to a club. You take two bottles of alcohol. The next thing you are on the table. Singing it's my life. At that time intellectuality does not matter. The sound atmosphere has arrested you. The next time you are singing bend over and you are bending over and you are a PhD holder, doctor. <laughs> intellectualism can never defeat spiritualism. That's the fact. This thing will, is serious. Are you getting me? <laughs> the law of sound. We can dwell there because I'm a musician. Allow me to finish this scripture then we go. Is that okay? Do you have two minutes? Let's finish. Let's finish. Therefore the angel of the Lord commanded God to say to David that David should go erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Onan. A threshing floor is a language of judgment. That's where you separate the wheat from the chaff. So David went up at the word of God which he had spoken in the name of the, of the Lord. Uh -huh. Now Onan turned and saw the angel and his four sons who were with him hid themselves but Onan continued threshing wheel. So again their eyes were open in the spirit. They saw the angel. So David came to Onan and Onan looked and saw David and he went out from the threshing floor and bowed before David with his face to the, to the ground. 22. Then David said to Onan, grant me the place of this threshing floor that I may build an altar on it to the Lord. You, are, you shall grant it to me at the full price that the plague may be withdrawn from the people. So he never wanted favors. He understood sacrifice. He understood altars. But Onan said to David, take it to yourself and let my Lord the king do what is good um, in his eyes. Look, I also give you the oxen for burnt offering, the threshing implements for wood and the wheat for the grain offering. I give it all. Uh -huh. Then King David said to Onan, no, but I will surely buy it for the full price for I will not take that what is yours for the Lord nor offer burnt offering with that which cost me. That's what he said. Many people want to serve God with that which cost them. I told you there is a sacrifice that can make you cry. Una letter sacrifice, lakini macho yako imejama chose because of the price. But you know you're obeying God. Saying, Lord, even if it's in tears, let me obey you. I've heard your word. And it's not to punish you. There, let me, there, there are levels we can't access until we understand. And sacrifice is not just money. Like right now, I'm sacrificing my sleep. I think I sleep for five hours only. I have to study, do Bible study daily, do midnight prayers. Sleep is luxury. Every time, I always tell my wife, Monday, Nita, Lala. Mungu na niamusha six. And then I'm here, Ebu study for Bible study. So sacrifices. It can mean time. It can mean treasures. It can mean many things. But it will cost you. So David gave on and 600 shekels of gold by weight for the place. 
And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offering and peace offering and called on the Lord and he answered him from heaven by fire on the altar of burnt. That was the acceptance. Uh -huh, continue. Everybody read now. So hold it there. So what made the angel return this word? The sacrifice. So God cannot bypass the laws of that realm. He told the angel with retreat, but only a sacrifice and an altar. These are languages of prayer. Now, are you seeing the calamity we are in as a nation? Yes? We are almost entering into an economic crisis. Things are not shaping up. Things are shaping down. You think we are going to be fixed by an economist. We need God. We need God. Some foundations are not shaken by political ideologies. And I stand here as a voter in this nation to say categorically, there is no politician that has proved to care for us. None. 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 If a politic right now, the opposition, the government, and the opposition in government, all of them are eating from us. Real revolutionists always step out of the system and they say, this is a corrupt system. You cannot complain eating from the system. Once your mouth is not full, you say you are corrupt. Then you eat. When it's full, you keep quiet. None is for us. None. How? We just need to pray and speak the truth. Okay. Let, let's, how many love soccer? Okay. I love Manchester. So imagine. Imagine a man has failed to perform in Chelsea. And we buy him from Chelsea. What were Chelsea, Paul? We, <laughs> no pun intended. We buy him from Chelsea and give him a Manchester jersey. If the man was a poor performer in Chelsea, the jersey in Manchester will not make him perform. So what are we seeing? People that have not delivered, moving to new parties and saying, these ones never, who are they? They were there. The day, and I know what they are going to do. The day the election will near, two months, is the day they will step aside and say, we don't even want that, Sarah. We want to fight for people. And us, in our foolishness, who say these guys are fighting, no one is fighting for us. They are fast is their stomachs. You are there to eat what trickles down. So when they come to your town, eat their money well. It is your money you are eating. <laughs> I've given you permission. Hallelujah. And then the day of voting, think soberly. Okay. That conversation is coming. Now listen, a nation is not governed by Kuteseka. It is governed by legislations. If a man cannot write a bill in parliament, but he does not have the intelligence of writing a bill, and I know in that ballot paper, there are those who are learned who will show up, those who are there to eat for us, and those who are politically there. But because we are always blind, we go with the waves. May the Lord deliver us. Amen. For real, by the way, we don't have a problem with leaders in Kenya. We have a problem with voters. Tunadanganyango mchana. Mchana. Bado kona bendera ya serikali. Bado una leash wana taxpayers money. Alafu nasema, uku ni kubaya. Mukini pea, nitafanya. Toka kwanza ongelea inje. Amazing If you want to know my political inclination, if nothing changes, on that day, I'll be watching Netflix. Me. <laughs> That's what I'll do. And me, me, me. Sasa si kama pastor, Anthony Kahora Mwangi, na bibi yangu, wakita kuvote sawa. Mimi, siyezi kubali kujidanganya. Tena. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just speaking the truth you know until people come to a place and get tired I think we'll just go through the same cycle same lies same ideology from 1975 
Yaani hazijai jengo. Si okay, si hata ukuja na kauongo kengine kampia. Tuambie mtatu pee pizza na you know to improve the lie at least one of these one is a creative liar. Hizo barabara zingeanza kujengwa na ndizi. Okay, wacha tu. At that time when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Onan, the Jebusite, he sacrificed there. David was afraid because something was happening. For the tabernacle of the Lord and the altar of the burnt offering which Moses had made in the wilderness were at that time at the high place in Gibeon. Uh-huh. 30. But David could not go before it to inquire of God for he was afraid of the sword of... Now you need to understand this same area, I believe it's in... Chronicles second chronicles 32 the same area is where the ark of the covenant is where second chronicles 32 now solomon began to build the uh, the house of the lord at jerusalem on mount moriah where the lord had appeared to his father david at the place that david had prepared on the threshing floor of onan the jebusite are you seeing that is where the temple stood how many remember mount moriah What happened in Moriah? That is where Abraham was told to sacrifice Isaac in one of the mountains of Moriah. So there is a probability the existing altar of Abraham is the one David activated and the covenants of Abraham were activated and David accessed a portal and God answered by fire to show him I have dealings here. and then that's where solomon built the temple and when solomon sacrificed in second chronicles 7 the fire and the glory of god came that area was secured by a man hallelujah hallelujah what was i trying to achieve in that jesus watu wa nairobi mtusamehe atukwange na hizi tabia za kishagi za kumaliza ibada 2:30 but tunapenda mungu Now listen. David raised an altar, stopped an angel who was attacking earth. So where was the altar raised on earth? What did it interfere with? The spiritual. Where was the angel? Where was he interfering with? If there is nothing else you remember, the reason why I've taken all that time is just to explain that and to prove that through scripture. that there are things we can do here and they will affect there and there are things that can happen there and they begin to affect here that's why you need intelligence in the spirit to understand what matters done here that's why if you look at the church today the language do i have a minute this one will help somebody i was in prayer the lord told me the first wave came of salvation and many people ran to my house and he told me the second wave especially to my believers is deliverance and let me explain it very well all the years all the years hakuna wakati kumekuwa na teachings za madhabahu kama saa hizi all the years of our of our existence in faith this is the time this conversation is coming up and people even unbelievers are beginning to understand there are altars there are covenants there are deals that were done in my family but now the challenge as the lord is planning to deliver his own that sound has been hijacked by fake men and they are preaching it for their own and that's why because people are seeing this is a reality majority are willing to do anything for their own deliverance are you getting it and if you ask me it is intelligence of spiritual matters that will help men address some of these things and adjust them and know that something may have been done here yes and interfere there but also another thing can be done here to adjust there and this intelligence will give you clarity and it will give you understanding that by the time you begin to engage things will be engaged professionally So what people have done they have built a case and they have made you believe if a witch gave a full cow you need to give two. So you have to look for 160k because one cow is 80 and people are buying salvation with their own money it's a lie. It's not of God and that's why when people that system doesn't work they hate church and they hate Jesus. Why they were deceived. It is my prayer 
that God will usher us to the ultimate point of Calvary to know where burdens can be laid and the power of the Holy Ghost that can journey back in time and that just matters once we have clarity of this realm. Let us stand up on our feet. Have you learned something? It will be illegal for you to come from where you came from and for you to be here and for you to just live empty. I'm not going to make a big prayer because in the afternoon from three, we are gathering here for prayer. Two hours. Are we together? And at that time, we'll, we'll intensify in prayer. But I just want you to lift up your hands. Say, Lord, open my eyes in the spirit. Open my eyes that I may see things in the spirit. Lord, open my ears that I may be keen to hear the sound of the spirit. Lord, today I now understand the heavens and the operations. Any attack on my heavens, let it end now in the name of Jesus. Every interference in the heavens, let it end now. Whatever was done on earth to alter invoke and attack my heavens let it cease now in the name of Jesus I stand now on the altars of Calvary I partner with the sacrifice of Jesus and I declare my heavens cannot be hijacked my heavens cannot be interfered with my heavens cannot be intruded. Every transaction that is not of God in my heavens, let them cease now. Let them cease now. Let them cease now. In the name of Jesus. May that be a portion. There is no other prayer I can pray for you. When your heavens are opened, some things begin to happen naturally. Let me give you this secret as you prepare to give. There are times when men turn in prayer for long and you begin to see things falling in place rapidly and you discover it's not that you have been praying a lot but you begin to see doors are opening. A, a CV you had sent two years ago is now recalled and people are calling you with such urgency. That is exactly what happens when the heavens begin to open up. Interference cease. Are we together? Are we together? Your heavens carries your answers. We'll continue with this series and I'll show you through scripture how men suffer when their heavens are attacked. There is a level of delay which is a product of an attacked heaven where things don't move but you know that you know You've made the right prayer and all that. But you know my heaven has been hijacked. Ah. When you understand. There are times I, I'll go in prayer and discern there is an interference. And at that time, I don't pray for anything. I pray for an open heaven. And things begin to fall in place. Are we together? Are we together? Delay. There is a level of delay. There are many factors that cause delay. But one of them is a shut heaven. That is what Daniel dealt with. Can I share something? As you're preparing to give. Daniel entered into Babylon. The first time he was not very prayerful. And the king had a dream. He said, can anyone interpret? The man did not have spiritual intelligence. The heavens were shut. He said, listen, king, don't kill us. There is a way we activate our antenna. Let us pray. He gathered his men. They entered into a fast. And at that time, there was an acceleration in the realm of the spirit. That is the time Daniel conquered Babylon in the spirit. And that time, by conquering Babylon in the spirit, Daniel and the men that prayed were given government post as others remained as slaves. They became governors in. One, the king died of Babylon. The son took power. One day a handwriting showed up on a wall. The king could not interpret. 
The wise men say there is a man who carries the spirit of the gods. His name is Daniel, who interpreted in the reign of your father. Because he had conquered the heavens, this time he didn't go for prayer. He showed up. He said, O king, that and writing, it means mene mene tekel pekel. You have been weighed, measured, and found wanting, and Pasha is coming. Now, when Pasha overthrew Babylon, Daniel read by the books of Jeremiah that our captivity is over. It was on the 71st year. 70 years were over. He began to pray a prayer that was accurate in scripture. But he could not receive answer. Because he had conquered powers of Babylon. But there was a new prince in town called Persia. It took 21 days of delay for him to receive an answer. Hello. When I read that scripture. It begins to tell me. You, you only see me touch politics. If, if I was to give you deep truths of politics. You will never look at a leader tribal. You look at them from their altars. Because a leader does not come carrying presidency. He comes carrying enthronement in the spirit. Hi. If we had a wrong leader. I'm not. I'm not of course I pray for the president. If we had a wrong leader in this nation. The day Obama came. Gazi would have been legalized. But because the altars of God, I know they've not been working right. It is the altars of God that endorse the current government. In the realm of the spirit, they are louder. But the problem is, if the church does not pray, someone might come with his altars and the next thing you enter into bondage. And the next thing you begin to see wicked men taking power. And let me tell you, dethroning a principality with such a caliber of believers is tough. They are lazy. They demonstrate on Twitter. Hashtags. Jesus. We demonstrate on our knees. Hello? That's where we... So we have to... That's why when you see me, one of the things, and I'm very categorical, and this one I, I will not mind to be quoted. I said, those political parties, as they are coming, their names count a lot. Their names count a lot. As a leader, whatever you utter, you can speak hope or speak to. That's a fact. And I say it as a young man. If I get a chance to meet with one of them, I'll tell them, I respect you as leaders. But please, please, you are prophets in that office. Come up with an initiative that will inspire a nation. Uh, you have good ideologies, but the wrong branding in the spirit. Demons will propagate this matter. Later we'll find a nation covered in a certain atmosphere. Because we endorsed it. We declared it. We announced it. It's a fact. The next thing you see people committing suicide. And I'll be real. I've seen bishops. And it is my prayers the church. May they sit. Our vice president down. And tell him we honor you. We pray for you. You're a man of church. You're a prophet in the spirit. Don't call a nation hustler. Declare a blessing. Declare a blessing. Because as a leader, you enter power with hustler nation. I, we are here. You know, we are recorded live. We are not dying tomorrow. We will be here to cry. We will be here to cry. Because we endorsed something in the spirit. And don't get me wrong. I voted this government. Now you know where I voted. Are you getting me? So this has nothing to do with Opa, see, where when you walk, where I am, I am a Kenyan and I'm a man that knows faith. So this has nothing to do with, I, I look at their ideologies, they are good, they are, but the branding, I understand spirituality. If I look it at the lenses of spirituality, who will sell their destiny? This is a well of revival. When revival hits a town, they are blessed. Who will cast our blessing by a branding? Are you getting me? Yes. It has nothing to do with personalities. I know it is not his idea. I know there are people who sit down and come up with things that men relate with. How I pray the bishops that are in that camp can open their eyes in the spirit and see it is our generation being called hustlers. We are not hustling because we want. There is an economic crisis. We have been put down on the food chain. You can't brand us by our problems. You need to speak hope. Speak deliverance. Speak solutions. 
We cannot celebrate poverty. We can't. We are struggling. We are committing suicide. We are struggling to put food on the table. And these are old men. Thinking on young men. And we are there shouting. I am no Jesus. I am not one. And you cannot be one. We can't end this. I know matter spiritual. This is a gate. These are some of statements that hinder revival. Because revival is an outburst and it comes with blessing. How can you be blessed with a title hustler? And if nothing happens, this revival might be diverted. You will see it in Tanzania. And what we are supposed to receive? It might take another hundred years. That's how Somalia missed it. A missionary died in Mombasa because there was war in Somalia. He couldn't penetrate. That's how today there is no Christianity. More than a hundred years later because one, the one that carried the light of the town died in Mombasa. So you cannot be careless with seasons of life. If we miss our season as a nation, revival comes with our blessings. It comes with our healings. It comes with our breakthroughs. It comes with our things, foundations being shaken demonically. If nothing happens, we will enter a level whereby we shall cry and it will be too late. Because when we were meant to cry, we never cried. I speak this with all due respect as a man of God. And I speak this because the realities of the spirit cannot be transacted with ignorance. Hallelujah. And I stand to say, I don't support any political party. As per now, no one is serious enough to show me that they care for me. All of them want to be in government, to eat from us and then brand us hustlers. If men of revolution like Martin Luther were there, they were not in government. Men like Mandela, they were in jail. He was given a deal. He was told, we are going to release you and shut up. He said, if my people are not being released, don't release me. Let me die in jail. Because this jail represents the bondage of my people. Where are the freedom fighters of our day? But people are stealing from us. They are giving us handouts. And then they are looking at us fight for dropouts from the rich man table. And then we think they will change our lives. They can't. They can't. There's a time you have to believe in the sword and the spirit. We will pray but not out of ignorance. Let me tell you what I'm going to pray. Anyone that is not of God, may they be vomited out. The destiny of this nation is greater. Are you getting me? Because if nothing happens, we are in, as a nation, we are in a transition stage. And destinies are aborted at transition junctions. So if if a generation shows up and receives power with the wrong ideology, no one will ever save us. That's it. It will take a new breed to begin to engage. And that breed must be a breed of values. Our next battle as a nation will not be a battle of tribe. It will be a battle of values. And that it's better tribal than values. If you don't know, money has been poured in this nation to push the gay agenda. I was sitting with a very senior guy in government. He told me, where I sit, they gave a million dollars. And they had already elected one to take me out. But the people that sit in the board have values and they said, we need you. We have been paid, but we have refused. We need you. I said, our generation, we worship money. We, we, we can sleep with a sponsor to pay rent. If you are paid to pass the law that is going to kill and attract judgment on a nation, how many of us will stand their value test and say, I cannot sell the destiny. A, a million dollars is a hundred million on your table to sell a destiny. How many have character enough to say no? How many have stamina enough to say no? When you are called a hustler, it means you nikuomoka at any cost. Because we don't show men process, we show them medals. We show young people medals. And this nation, we celebrate medals more than scars. So how you got your medals, whether you are a drug dealer, whether you killed, whether you robbed a whole department, we don't care. Come with your medals, we'll give you power. It is error. We must talk to ourselves. We have, a, we are overtaxed. Right now, Gazi Mepanda, how will an ordinary young man 
survive. And you can't live without gas. Japanese pay am a brado. Ni gas. These are things we consume daily. Where was it passed? In the same parliament. They were there in that parliament. That's why they passed it. Those who are saying they are fighting for us, they passed it. Because they need money for 2022. So we will be pressed billions and then we are given thousands. And then we say, Mtietu. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, me I'm still born again. Are, you, are we together? I'm still preaching Jesus, amen? I'm not pushing for any political party. Don't get me wrong. Don't misquote me. I'm pushing for voters that can think and think generation. And say, this one, we can't vote in me. This one, we know the altars he consulted of the mountain. At least I know. If that guy stands president, he omnes and he quote, I, at least I know who not to vote. I have not known who to But that one, I can't. He has announced his altars. That's a fact. If another one goes public like that, Again, that one will have announced. In fact, I'll be in their opposition saying, this one will come with his altars. Avoid. Okay, now these are holy anointings. Sometimes when I say, manga vitukai, you naingia kwa office, you naingia za baridi. You say, say, atmosphere measure. Lift up your hands, say, Lord, whatever you have purpose for Kenya, it shall come to pass. Give us the boldness to stand and to declare you are oracles in our day in the name of Jesus. Let thy name be lifted. Let the prophecies of revival not be aborted in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's give an offering. Let's give an offering. Let's give an offering. Let's give an offering. If you are giving your tithe, this is the end month and some are giving for the land project. Some are giving their tithes. Some are giving their fast food. Any giving that you are giving. All your givings will always go to the land project. Is that okay? But it is good to divide and say this is my pledge. I'm honoring it and this is my tithe. Are you ready with your giving? Someone asked me, Pastor, where do you tithe? I tithe to my father in the faith. I also pay tithe. Are we together? Yes. I can't tie the yes. Me don't receive. You know, it's like Trump pesa kwa mfuko weka kwa ingine. Sio ni kuje enjoy. So I tithe upward. Hallelujah. And we even as a church we tithe. Amen. And we have been very faithful. That's why God has been blessing us. Father in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Thank you for this service. Thank you Lord that you have blessed us with substance. Thank you Lord. That out of the treasury of our blessing, we are picking a portion to surrender it to your altar. Lord, you have given us a hundredfold. We are taking a tenth. You have given us harvest. We are taking the first best fruits. You have given us resources. We are picking out of it as a thanksgiving and as a celebratory offering. And Lord, thank you because we are custodians of your treasury. We are giving sacrifices because of divine instructions that you have delivered unto us. As the money comes to the offering basket and comes to the ministry and the assignment, Lord, may it also ascend before your holy presence as a sweet smelling incense. Bless thy children. Even as we step out of the new month and the new week, I declare you are blessed. You are going in and coming out is blessed. Everything concerning your life is perfected. You are a winner. You are a warrior. No barrier can stand you. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Keep rising, keep soaring. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. So all these are altars. Amen. You can give from any altar. God bless you. Kono wako kweli umeni bariki. Kwam kono wako kweli umeni bariki. Kwam kono wako. Kwam kono 